This is sewage from 1.4 million residents in the Bay Area. It might seem like just waste, but it's a goldmine for researchers. I am a scientist and I'm supposed to be skeptical and I continue to be amazed that what we measure in wastewater seems to be so helpful. Sewage has become a valuable tool that can help officials tackle outbreaks like COVID-19, monkeypox, and even polio before people show up at testing centers and hospitals. After officials found polio virus in New York sewage, it became a state emergency. Like the wastewater epidemic, we all just like to say, you know, everybody uses a toilet. So how exactly do researchers find viruses in our waste? And what can sewage tell us about public health? Before researchers can find pathogens in the sewage, you have to flush it down. Sewage from over a million Bay Area residents ends up here, at the San Jose Santa Clara Regional Wastewater Facility. This is everything that comes down the drain. When you take a shower, brush your teeth, use the toilet, all of your excretions go into wastewater and end up at a wastewater treatment plant. In 2020, researchers started the Sewer Coronavirus Alert Network, also known as SCAN, at Stanford University. The San Jose facility works with SCAN. 12 times a day, workers here collect samples of raw sewage. They sample the wastewater after the solids have settled out of it. That's now what's called sludge. The measurement is 250 milliliters. The combined sample is stored in this mini fridge until it's full and collected once a day. Then it's sent to Verily, a health research company in South San Francisco that partners with SCAN to test samples from across the country. Here, researchers process samples from more than 60 plants. On a busy day, they can test close to 70 samples. After they arrive, the liquid needs to be separated from the solid waste. The samples are dropped into the centrifuge and spun at tens of thousands of revolutions per minute. The solids have about 100 times more viral particles on a per mass basis than the liquid, so we want to be able to detect things that are at very low concentrations or very rare in the sewer shed or in the waste, and so the solid gives us the best opportunity to do that. After the solid settles at the bottom of the tube, the liquid is pulled out with a pipette. The lab only needs 0.5 grams to test for viruses like COVID-19. The rest of the sample is saved in a negative 79 degrees Celsius freezer. We want to archive that and save it if we ever need to go back to test it for any new virus uh, that might have been circulating there during that time or something we didn't know about. What happens is that the lab staff take that solid and they as they affectionately term it, to roll it into a poopsicle so that it can fit in a much smaller tube than that large tube. To test for viruses, the viral particles need to be pushed into a liquid preservative by force. After another round in the centrifuge, the viral DNA and RNA are ready to be isolated. Verily uses machines like these to transfer samples and isolate genetic material to make the process more efficient. Finally, the samples are ready to be tested. Verily uses PCR to figure out just how much viral DNA and RNA is in the sample. PCR is a test used to detect genetic material. The lab can test for up to three viruses at a time using one plate. Each plate has 96 wells for samples. If the PCR detects a specific virus, it makes millions of copies of the genetic material and tags them a fluorescent color. That information is plotted on this graph, where researchers can see just how much of each virus was in the sample that day. So these are ones, these gray ones here, these are ones that had no virus, no viral RNA or DNA in that particular well. These are ones that had monkeypox, SARS-CoV-2, and human metanumovirus. So just looking at this, you can see there's more SARS-CoV-2 than there is monkeypox, and there's probably a little bit more human metanumovirus than there is monkeypox. So the whole testing process takes eight hours. That's longer than it takes to test a COVID swab sample. But sewage is a lot more complicated. Researchers still consider wastewater to be what's called a leading indicator. People can shed the virus into wastewater before they even show symptoms and know to get tested. This past winter, in Boston specifically, you saw the wastewater levels spike before we really saw the Omicron variant take off. And so that sometimes gives public health officials and hospitals a heads up saying, OK, something might be coming here. We should probably prepare. And researchers say it's efficient. One wastewater sample from the San Jose facility covers over a million people. 
Not everybody has a primary care provider or when they feel sick has the ability or even wants to go out and get tested. It is a really sort of unbiased, broad way of sort of collecting community samples, which is helpful for public health. Now, officials across the country monitor wastewater for COVID. Since the pandemic started, there has been a huge surge in interest in using wastewater to monitor community health. But it's not a perfect tracking system. Sewage can't pinpoint who exactly is sick. And it can't provide a total case count either. Instead, it provides information on the level of virus in the community and how it changes over time. The idea of testing wastewater isn't new. It's a pretty old technology, actually. It's decades old. And primarily, it was used to sort of monitor for polio. And in New York, that old technology helped alert officials to the recent spread of polio virus throughout the state. Governor Kathy Hochul declared polio a state disaster in September. Scan and Verily are also testing for diseases like monkeypox and influenza A. Once you have that infrastructure in place, there's an economy of scale. Like you can easily swap in and swap out assays like we were able to do with monkeypox. Tracking diseases isn't the only thing wastewater surveillance can be used for. Cities like Cary, North Carolina, and Tempe, Arizona had been tracking opioid usage through wastewater, even before the pandemic. And epidemiologists are exploring how hospitals can use their own wastewater to test for antibiotic-resistant bacteria. But BAME hopes wastewater surveillance could be useful beyond labs and public health officials. A dream could be that we know it's like a weather report, like you know in your community what is circulating. We do have this vision for all the uses of wastewater and it includes things like pandemic response, staffing at hospitals and clinics, choice of pharmaceuticals or non-pharmaceutical interventions, and even vaccine development.